Welcome back. So we've now got this printed out. So uh, it came out pretty good. We I see a little bit of warping up here in the vertical surfaces, but uh, all in all, not too bad. It's going to take a little bit to get it off this uh, 3D EZ. Um, so let's go ahead and get this off the bed, and then um, we'll see you back at the bench, and uh, we'll put it together and see how it all works out. So let's head over to the bench. <laughs> So we've um, we've printed this piece out, and we've prepared it. What, what I've done is a after I printed it out, removed it from the bed, as you saw in the last piece in the time lapse. Uh, I took it and I stressed it by mounting these different pieces on it, and um, you know which definitely pulled on some of the layering and caused splitting in the layering. And then so what I did is I took 15 minute clear epoxy, uh, took some artist brush I got for a dollar at the dollar store package of them, and then painted the clear epoxy on. And what that what that, that has done is filled all the layer separations um, very nicely. So that's worked out well. And then I've also epoxied this bolt, quarter 20 bolt in the end, as well as epoxied this uh, end in place. If I would have got real fancy and thought about it in my design and probably worthwhile, I would have uh, also taken the same uh, uh, bolt hole that I used to create this and then beef this structure up a little bit. And so it had a um, uh, hex head on it like this did recess, but you know, it's one of those things you really didn't think about and I really wasn't sure how I was going to do this at the time to be honest also. So it's one of those things um, when you're doing revision. So, you know, for one revision take, I'm pretty happy with this. And again, you can kind of see now I've got this relief in here. Now this is one of the important things because what a lot of people do especially with 3D printing stuff, is they would have this as a complete circle. And when this pulled tight, it would pull against itself and create pressure back in, in here. And what happens is this relieves the pressure and makes the cinch far stronger and, and less likely to break. And then I've got, you know, in short, the whole body of this kind of pulling together the structure. So, it, you know, it's, it's pretty rigid. And so, again, the idea is, is uh, you know, it slips over the, the Schedule 40. This is half inch schedule 40, so the the ID is inner diameter is a half, the outer diameter is closer to three quarters, uh, even maybe even an inch. Um, so one of the reasons I went with the schedule 40 over this schedule 20, uh, because it is quite a bit more expensive, is it's threaded, so it goes together easier and it comes apart easier, so it's more adaptable and I can also take it apart to store it. So again, even though a little bit more money, um, I think it was a more effective choice. And I'll show the complete rig setup. However, I want to talk, before we get there, I want to talk a little bit again about the design. So I've designed it. So, you know, in short, any quarter quarter 20 um, device can screw on the end. So I can put my my clamps here, because in this this is what will be on it most of the time, actually. Because the... Um, the uh, camera phone, which I'm using to record this, the, the, it's got a high-resolution HD camera on it, is what I use for most of the time at the bench here. And then I'm going to also have um, this piece, so I can put on a camera mount uh, also. So, um, you know, that works. So basically, any quarter 20, I can, I can screw on there. So that really works out well. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the whole rig together and then I'll show you the whole rig assembled. So uh, let's cut over and take a look at that. So here's what the assembled rig looks like at the end of the day. So again, we've just made it out of some simple Schedule 40 um, pieces of a half inch OD. And you see the mount up there. So the camera will mount up there so it will show down on the uh, piece. Now I'm going to make some more of these because you see these lights off to the... the lights off to the side. So I'm going to build some um, 
also light mounting brackets on here too to show down so you'll be seeing in some future videos where obviously it'll be you know a downward view on the desk and and so because right now i use a tripod and some basically um jibs to hold the camera out over and it's kind of a pain and so i want to come up with something simple and cheap um that would really work and so far i think that this will do the job so um anyways let's kind of convert over and see how it works okay so here we are so um you know the idea is we can now look down on the bench and actually what i can do is um the screen is about at eye level for me too so i can see well if i have my glasses on actually what what's in the in the screen so i can see all the stuff in the field of view and, and handle all the different pieces the lighting still needs to be worked on because again this is part of my office and i have you know i have 16 can lights overhead and um you know, so you have this one that makes it bright over here, and then I've got the two couple hundred watt halogens off to the side. So again, I want to get some light that shines in a little bit more densely from the side. Um, you know, however, again, you can kind of see how this works. So I've got probably about 30 bucks in the schedule for it, even whatever to print the plastic. So it's actually a pretty effective solution. Um, one of the things that I might also mention is, is on some of the couplers, you might want to put a little bit of, you know, uh, lightweight grease or that on the couplers you're going to take apart on the schedule for it. It just makes it easier to come take apart and put back together because it tends to want to bind up a little bit. But outside of that, it uh, seems to be working out pretty good. So uh, I'm going to try some different... Uh, mounts at the end of the day on this to, to get this adjusted and squared up but this is actually quite working pretty good and then i actually have and you can't see it but an external microphone that's attached um to the camera and that's at about um, you know mouth level so i am speaking into the microphone as i'm talking to you doing this so hopefully that'll pick up some of the audio quality so really still trying to work on some of the auto quality but you know again one of the big things about this print um, or this this two-part series is again taking an idea whipping something up in a simple CAD program printing it out and putting it directly into use and, and that's what we've done in this case um, I'll definitely have the part on Thingiverse, I mean, on, on Tinkercad. I don't know if I'll upload it to Thingiverse. Uh, I might. Uh, we'll see. And if there's enough demand. But you can get it off th uh, Tinkercad, too. So I'll have the link down below. So, hey, if you found this interesting, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. More of this stuff coming. If you guys want to see specific things or you're interested in specific things, hit me up down below in the comments, and, and I'll try to, you know, hook you up. You know, and again, I've got a day job, so it might take a little time to get around to, but, uh, you know, I do keep a list of all the things that I get comments on and that and try to get around to them. So, hey, thumbs up, subscribe. See you in the next video. Cheers. Like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.